Hello everyone, this is Board Games of Bourbon. I'm Glenn Flaherty, and right now I want to tell you all about Pocket Mars, a game that I got by accident. It is a small box game from Gray Fox Games. They also make the awesome Multi-Universum that I thoroughly enjoy, and Conquest of Sparrows. Now all these games come at a pretty low price point, and this one in particular I'm happy with because it has a solo mode, one to four players. So this game is going to kind of live at a nexus between having multiplayer that's pretty good, I'd give it a 7 out of 10, uh, solo mode, and price point. Okay, I think I got this for around 10 bucks. Now, uh, I will tell you now, you're either going to think this is a fantastic buy, or you're going to be living in the doldrums. I was just thinking it is the most tepid game you ever played but let's move forward um, now first thing when you get this game i thought it was really cool because you get this tortured looking astronaut face here maybe along the lines of the joker or venom or event horizon nay it's none of that it's actually a very straightforward game and what you're trying to do is you have astronauts on earth and by the way the artwork in the game is really cool the little pieces are even supposed to be astronaut helmets which I really appreciate. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your astronauts from Earth into your ships, from your ships into these Martian bases. First, you're going to get them into a part of the base that's worth only one star and then get them into a limited capacity area that's worth two stars. Once you get all of your astronauts into somewhere, the game's over and you count up points. The way you are going to get them onto these ships and into these bases is through card play. You're going to have some cards that are down and some cards that are up. The cards that are up stay in your hand like this and they remain hidden. And you can play them for one ability, one ability alone. So for the example here on this blue card, it says, I may draw two cards, keep one of them, and add the other to a building face down. I can do something over here if I play the green card that says, I may switch two astronauts between a one point and a two point area in the building of a choice. Now, that doesn't just mean me or two of my people. It means I can affect somebody else. If somebody's in the two and I'm in the one, I can pull them down and put myself in there, you know, and stuff like that. You're going to find that all these cards have ways to manipulate uh, launching people from Earth into the ships, switching ships uh, with buildings, switching parts within the buildings, stuff like that. When you play cards from your down area, these are played directly to the bases. They have to go to the color of the base you're on. And three things are going to happen here. The power on the card. You get the bottom power. Now, in this case, this says discard one blue card from your hand and move one uh, astronaut from Earth to your building. Okay, so you would take yours from Earth and put it directly in the building. That's pretty powerful. Now, I do have to play this to the building. The first part that I get is the power from the card. The second part I get is the power of the building. And every one of these buildings, depending on the color you have, there's colors for each of these buildings, give you different powers that can really shake it up. And there are good decisions because of that. And there's also order of cards you have to do. And sometimes you debate the hand power versus the power you played to the building. But in this case, what this says here, if I play it to the building, uh, my power is discard one blue from your hand and move one astronaut from the earth to the building. And then the building here says put one card from your hand into what's called the prep area, which are the down cards, uh, and then another one to the bottom of the deck. You do that to kind of clear out bad cards. The green building here, if you went here, it says you move one astronaut from the one to the two point star area of your choice. Here it says move one astronaut from your ship to a building of your choice. So that's really important. Just get it out there. This year, it's here, launch one astronaut from Earth to your ship, and over here it gives you energy. Sometimes you have to spend energy to make other things happen. The third thing that happens with your card play is if you get a card, like let's say we had this five, and I put this on this green building, if my number is higher than that number, then I may take an astronaut from my ship and put it in the building. If I play a card that is not higher, I may not do it. And that's really the thrust of the game. That's how you play everything in it. Now, multiplayer, there's a lot of fun decisions, and I'd say this is a 7 out of 10. In the solo mode, uh, you have kind of a dumbed-down version of an AI player, which I think is very tepid, actually. I think you'd have more fun trying to just play a fulfilled two-player, two-hand card game. So you have to say to yourself, what is the game worth at that point? Well, I got this for 10 bucks, and I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I tried it. Uh, to be frank, I thought I was getting a different game. I confused the box titles. Oh, well. Um, I think the full price of this game is like 15 but I did see it on Amazon for $20 plus $9 shipping. Not a chance I would get it for that. But anyway, it's fast. It's easy. It looks really good. By the way, it also has a ton of player aids here that tell you what to do in all the different modes, even solo mode, what your actions are, what the scoring uh, conditions are. Multiplayer, everyone's going to get something super handy. 
all the things have been thought about. That is Pocket Mars. If you have questions about it or if you just have comments about it, let me know. I'm happy to help and give you more information. Until next time, friends, be well and talk to you later. Bye.